at the William Irving ship who works here. Uh, he's a sensitive and he's got some stories to tell. I first started here about eight years ago. Um, my first ever experience, I had no idea that this place was even haunted yet. I was walking through some of the guest quarters and I had my shirt tucked. And at first you look around and you're like, well, could be anything, it happened again. So that's why I was started, brought it up to some other people that worked here and they said, nope, this place is very much haunted. Um, at this point I didn't really, it wasn't intuitive with my sensitivity yet. And at that point, ignorance was bliss. I was really young, I didn't want to know. Um, <laughs> Starting after that, starting the next night, even started having more activity happen. Um, I've been the production manager for the Haunted Tours here for a number of years. Um, so I've been here overnight many times, and I'll have props go off by themselves. I'll have doors open and shut to hear voices. Um, you've seen a couple apparitions. Um, I've seen two spirits that are here all the time, one male, one female. Uh, we believe the male is William, who was a man that was killed on board, and then another girl whose uh, name I was managing to pick up and was confirmed with a spirit box. Her name is Emily. Um, she's hanging around on the car to hold. She's very vocal. I've heard her throughout the car to hold. So I've had a new, large amount of experiences down in the cargo holds. In the back of the boat, I've also heard a lot of footsteps. We've had um, some of the machinery go off by themselves, doors slam. So I've experienced a little bit of everything here, but uh, thankfully nothing malevolent has come through, just the good spirits. Uh, we'll have numerous spirits come through when you're trying to communicate, but uh, water is a very good conduit uh, and a good source of energy, so spirits are very much drawn to boats, and especially this one, it's very active. Awesome, we're looking forward to a Absolutely. hopefully active evening. <laughs> yes, I'll be right up by your side doing the whole thing. Room. We've had people recording footsteps above them, um, hearing voices back here. Um, when we've had Halloween haunted tours going on, some props kind of activating by themselves, but primarily you'll hear footsteps. I've heard them in this hallway right above us. Um, we've, some of us have heard footsteps going up this ladder. I don't know if John's had any personal experiences back here. Hey, in the morning. morning, we come down, clean the brass, and we've got an office up there that we go take a break in after all that's done. Every morning, we'd hear somebody walking up this set of stairs. And it's distinct walking up those stairs and make that clank, clank, clank noise. Well, at first we're like, oh, it's just Steve, our boss, coming up, checking up on us. Wasn't him, like, four or five months of this in the first year of just that continuous clank every morning. If you're over here waiting for it, it never happened. If you're over in the office, always happened. This is where the boiler explosion happened. Uh, where the man was burnt, um, right here in front of this door. You can see the force of the impact and how it had on the steel, and this is where the door fit. Right in there. Directly up from here, when we get back upstairs, we, uh, the first year, Dan, our co-worker, he saw the, somebody walking across. Dressed up, full uh, Union blues, yellow hard hat. Mm -hmm. So, he's still Hanging around up there, just never had anything down here. Mm -hmm. It's almost every single time I go through there, it's like someone's right behind me. You hear them and feel them right behind you. Um, but uh, nothing else besides that. I'm not the only one that's experienced it. They're going to see cool things like this. Yeah. Well, we're going to get our work out in time. Oh, God, yeah. times have you guys seen? Um, I've seen the woman in white twice, um, and I've heard her more than that. Um, first time I saw her was about five years ago, and I was working in the cargo hold. We had a castle towers, and then there's this, the middle section that was free yet because they didn't put the cross brace on it. And um, I was top racing down a ways, down the cargo hold on the maze, and I was top racing, and I looked up, and I saw the top half of her disappear behind a wall that was in a couple hallways in front of me, and so she just walked down the stairs. 
And it was about 2 in the afternoon, so I didn't think anything of it. I looked and I was like, oh, last tourist, go catch up with them down the hallway. Because I had a couple friends that were also with me and they heard her walk down. They heard someone walking and they're like, someone's walking down the hallway. I went and checked, no one. So this is where the guests would be staying. Um, they do have two floors of them. How they say they would be kind of laid out is higher up on the totem pole you were in the class. There you got the upper lower bunk. Um, these ones are a little bit smaller than the ones above, and no difference in the bathrooms. The upper ones have walk-in showers. Yep. There, on this one forward of here, there's actually some more cruise quarters, and then there's the windless room for the anchor. And then there's cruise quarters right below our feet as well. Yep. And what's really cool about it, it's such good craftsmanship. All of the doors leave those little holes on. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you shut it, there's too much air pressure, it won't shut. <laughs> so oh. if you open that door up, hold your hand over the hole and close it, you'll actually feel the rush of air out. This is the guest lounge. This is where they hang out. Um, we also kind of know, seen, seen and known as the observation deck. Um, very beautiful view up here. Um, here's a picture of William Irvin and Gertrude Irvin. So, um, this boat was named after William Irvin. He was the president of the U.S. Steel at the time. We did have an open room. Is there one of the most active locations? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Either side, either side. Little work. Not this way, for a little bit. <laughs> shut, especially a closet that's in that room where it's particularly hard to open. Um, people have heard that door rattling. Um, this is the room I've also been touched in, just getting a little nice tug in. Ever since I started here, this was the one room where people would be like, I'm not going there alone. And I never really understood why until I first did and got tug, tug. And I was like, well, that's why. <laughs> so, um, and then one instant I had, I was, there's a there's a hole that runs along here, and this here in particular, this room was a clown room, and I was hanging up a black light, and I heard someone walking down this staircase, like the last four, so just clung, 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 doom, got to the bottom of it. And then I never heard footsteps coming towards me, and I was like, that's weird, maybe it was Sherry and Steve who were the production managers at the time, and so I went and checked, doors still shut and padlocked on the other side. This door right here? The one that'll open, but if you're pulling on it, you have to actually twist it and give it a good, good tug, and it'll actually open. And the actors have come to us when we're in the middle of running the night of October, and they'll say that the door will open. Um, this is cargo hold number one. This is what we call the ladder hold. This is the most active location that I've encountered. Especially in this back corner. Um, this is where we were doing the flashlights last time, and it's been very active. There's a grandfather clock that's in there, and it seems like every, ever since we got it, it's just the attention to it. Spirit box, the name that came through with it um, regarding it. Her name is Emily, and that's the name that I was validated on. This is our on tours that we do every single year. Uh, for the and then by shadows down here, you'll hear security doors open and shut, and I'll, there's a door down here that you'll, I'm getting an example. I've heard that many times down here, right here. There's a, it's not uncommon to hear this noise. I've um, heard that many times that props go up by themselves that are um, step pad activated, um, drop door, it was, it's a three quarter inch panel. It was myself. A um, guy named Jake and then another guy named Joel, who was our shop foreman that year. We were standing in the, right in our shop, writing on our board a list of things to do. We just brought it out to the large hold and we heard it pow. It did it three times and it was enough where it lifted up 
not the entire way, but the drop in its three quarter inch plywood, so it's very heavy. And it mm -hmm. normally is a, what, 120 PSI in a three foot piston that pushes it up. And so after that third one, we're like, okay, we're going home. <laughs> not one of yeah, coming on here in the middle of winter just to check for if there's any water leaking in or if there's anything going wrong. You know, one day you can come in, get through half the boat, be just fine, nothing. Next day you come on, nope, I'm not doing it, and leave. It's just, I'm not wanted here, I'm gone. Usually when you're just kind of wandering around doing, you're just kind of things that look like you're just doing whatever you're doing at the hunt. Mm -hmm. That's when things seem to happen. Um, when you try and instigate it, it doesn't really, it doesn't really bring it, bring it to you. That one of them likes to kind of play around with us because they'll move our drills, move our tools, move paint brushes on you. Like, you'll just leave to go get something, come back, and then whatever you're just using is totally gone. This is the door. Driving out or down here at about 2 o'clock in the morning. And all of a sudden the door swings open and it's got the clothes around it and at the time it had a bungee cord on it too. Well, it opened up four feet. And I was like, I wonder who's here? It's two o'clock in the morning. We're not really supposed to be here. We're just here spray paint because we got nowhere better to be. So I went over. No one's there. Nobody's holding the door open. Touch it. Door starts to close. Time passes. It happens again. I have to say, Brian, go touch the door. Touches it. Door closes. Third time it happened, we started asking questions and then the door would actually open and close. Don't remember the questions other than the last one, which was, do you want us to leave? The door slammed shut and we booked it. <laughs> Looking at it, it was probably saying, no, I want you to stay, but we didn't want to stay. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, a couple times during the investigation last week when we were doing the flashlights, I did make sure to ask like, are you okay with what we do here for the haunted tours? And the light came on right away. So, Kate, yes. what are you thinking of the ship so far? Um, I see you bought a captain's hat. Yes, I did. Um, I'm trying to use that as a trigger object a bit. Yep, it's been a long setup, two and a half hours, and we're really hot, but yep. hopefully uh, we'll start getting some activity soon. Yeah. I heard something. Like shuffling. Oh, yeah, I think I heard that, too. Who's down here with us? Oh, now I'm getting goosebumps on the back of my legs. Really bad. Hello? Just tingling, totally mm -hmm. tingling, which is weird because it's so hot. Yeah. Who's who's around me? Are you coming to check us out now? I'm just coming down the stairwell, and I got the extreme goosebumps on my legs, which right now it's like 85 degrees out in here. I'm guessing it's probably way hotter. I'm just dripping in sweat. So, got the chills, we thought we heard some shuffling going over that way, hard to tell if that's ship noise or not, but it's something to start with. Did you hear that squeaking? I don't hear that. I didn't hear that. Uh-oh. See this? Squeak. Are you sure it's not my, my shoe or something? That. Did you hear that? Sweet. Like this. No, it was a squeak.
just going to spirit box this right away and then we'll mm -hmm. see where that gets us. My name's Kate. And I'm Jill. We just want to talk to you. See how it doesn't work in here again. Shoot. Better off wandering around with the SP11. Gotta stand outside and run spirit box. <laughs> Hello? Can we try that? <laughs> yes. Because it worked fine when we were outside. Mm -hmm. okay. Can I try to get a little info at least outside. I'm going to get closer to the door. Is William here? It sounded almost like a chain or something. Is that one of you? Is that one of you? Did you hit chains? Did you, chain? Did you hit a chain? Yeah, it sounded like chains was coming from over there. Yeah. Like it was back there and it sounded like you took a chain and like hit a wall with it or something. Like the rack? It sounded like it was right yeah. over by where the rack is. It's the other side. Was that like this kind of noise? Like, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it sounds like to me over there. It's got like a scratch in I don't know what I'm hearing. It's like I keep hearing the footsteps. Change a little bit. Can you finish my knock? something to communicate with us and so they're like can you finish this knock and they did and then what not even two seconds later it was up really yeah man you guys are getting all the good stuff yeah so that was pretty cool and somebody was moving a chain around down there yeah, See, we thought we heard a chain when we were on that yeah, side, that's too. Saying, yeah, we were walking through the maze, and it sounded like somebody took a chain and, like, smacked it against a wall that's or something. That's one of the first things I heard. Where'd you want to go? I don't know. I mean, we can walk around. You can actually just turn that on and let it run as we're walking and asking questions. Is Emily here? Right in that medicine room? Because you didn't do much there, did you? Only time I've been in there was when we changed the tapes. Okay, so. we can go in there a little bit, try it in there. Sure. 
see if it works. That's working better than the regular spirit box. Is anybody down here with us? Did that just say yes? Who just spoke with us? What's your name? Maybe if you talk to him, John, you can get him Can you finish this knock? this knock but if you do it again though can you finish this knock sequence Did you get scared on that one? Uh, <laughs> I mean, no. I would just go over there right now by myself. Really? Here's the camera. We'll be back in 20 minutes. <laughs> it's just kind of weird that you did it twice yeah. and yeah. it would shift both well, times. Can you do it a third time? hard to say. I mean, yeah, it's been responding every time, like you say, there's been times where we're just sitting here, and I don't hear nothing. Mm -hmm. 